I am alive. I am also inhabiting the character in the story you are about to experience, written by a woman named Hope, who, unbeknownst to her, is also inhabiting a character in a parallel story authored by yours truly. As with any literary character, we are figments of the author's imagination, coming to life as our stories erupt and unfold. The only difference between our two stories is one actually happened, while the other never happened at all. appears to be happening, the real action, the big drama, the state of emergency, is often bubbling up just beneath the surface. Until then, it doesn't have to look like anything. It can look like nothing is happening. Because we love each other? Are you asking me? I thought we were good. I'm not in love. Here we go again. You're creating another art crisis. Art crisis? 
Whatever. I think we should talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. We talk too much. I think you better leave. Why should I leave? Because it's my apartment. I'm asking you to go. Hope, why are you doing this again? I really need you to leave now, Ben. I have to finish my story. I cannot do it with you here. Please. I'll be really quiet. It's your energy. Please. <sighs> Just go. Fine. Call me later. I don't like how we ended it. I'm on a break from my Uber shift. Uh, can, can I come in? I'm out front. What are you doing? No, I can't. I'm writing. I'm on a deadline. I really need to see you. All right. I get it. You need space. I need to be with you. We need different things. Simple, right? You know it's never simple with me. Call me tomorrow. Ben? You know I don't hate you, right? Yeah, I know. I'll call you tomorrow. Bye. I don't hate you either, Hope. I need you. Helen, an amateur birder and mythologist, arrives at the nature reserve, fresh from divorcing her second husband. Marriage was not to be her calling. She was called elsewhere, for now. She was following the call of birds. Agileus Phoenicius. 
one of the best studied wild bird species in the world. The red-winged blackbird is sexually dimorphic. Sexually dimorphic. The condition where two sexes of the same species exhibit different characteristics beyond the differences in their sexual organs. The male is all black with a red shoulder and yellow wing bar, while the female is a nondescript dark brown. Hi, I'm Phineas. Phineas? Hebrew word for serpent's mouth or oracle. Hmm. I'm Helen. Helen. Lovely name. We seem to have a etymological affinity. Are you here on assignment? Yes, I'm here to meet my third husband. <laughs> Are we in a Harlequin romance? I assume you're joking. I'm a dendrologist. I study trees. Well, Helen, it's been a pleasure. I have an appointment with some fungus. Perhaps we'll meet again. Nice meeting you too, Phineas. Yes, of course I was joking. Gets my sense of humor. Breaks my heart seeing so much disease. Phytophthora remorum. Who can truly know you? You come and go, weaving your gossamer web of death and decay. This is Hope. Oh, hi, Um, <clears throat> This is Gary. I'm calling you uh, from Outlet Magazine. Um, I just wanted to uh, confirm the story deadline for the end of the week and let you know that um, we'll be sending you a contract later today. Great. Thanks. Yes, I'm on schedule. I was just working on it now. Um, anything else I need to know about? Uh, yeah. Um, if you haven't already, we'll need to get your uh, Social Security number and tax ID for payroll. And um, I just want to be sure Cynthia let you know about the 10,000 word limit. Yes, she let me know about the word count. Um, I'll send you my tax ID number. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can always reach me here at extension five. Uh, again, my name is Gary. Um, thank you so much and I'll let you get back to work now. Thanks, bye. Great, thank you. I see a gray cloud around her forehead. She's a seer, but she's not aware of it. I also see the gold around her heart. She has the basic core energy. She's just not yet awakened to it. I see a silver shield in front of her solar plexus. She's short-circuiting her power. I, I think she can be trained. Oh, 
Mwani Ayo Umahaya Ayo Ayo Calliope sings to the energy body. Did you feel her energy? Yes, I, I did. We were on our way to have tea. Would you care to join us? Sure. I'll grab my, my stuff. I haven't seen you two around. Are you new to the area? No, we're actually from here. <clears throat> we just don't venture out together that often, except to gather the plants. The plants? Yarrow, salvia, cubensis. Cubensis? Psilocybin. It's for our work. So hope. What do you do? Me? I'm a writer. These days I'm writing a short story for publication. Oh, what's the story about? It's a kind of psychological romance. What do you do for work? We have an herbal apothecary business. If you give me your number, I can text you a link to our catalog. Sure. Great. 
I'm curious. What did you mean by psychological romance? Oh my god. Child here is a sorceress. A sorceress. Me. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head, child. It's just a label. I'll be back. I'm sorry. This might seem a bit strange, but do I know you? I don't know. Do you? You don't look familiar to me. You look like someone I know. Hmm. I get that sometimes. I've been told I have a, a kind of every man face. Oh no, I don't think you have an every man face at all. Really? What kind of face do I have? It's quite distinctive. Mm. Elegant. Sophisticated. <laughs> You can stop blowing smoke now. I'm Keith. And you are? Hope. I'm Hope. Please. Uh, I'm here with my friends now, but... I'd, I'd really like to meet up with you and talk sometime if that doesn't seem too weird. You seem kind enough. Sure. Why not? Uh, give me your phone and I'll punch in my number. Thanks. I'll call you soon. I don't usually do this kind of thing. What kind of thing? Ask a total stranger for their number. I'm not worried. By the way, I'm only in town for the week. Oh no. Great meeting you, Keith. I'll call you.
haunting, mysterious, spellbinding. You must be Calliope, the ancient Greek muse of song and poetry. And you must be Attis, ancient Greek god of trees. You know Attis was castrated, right? Yes, but Attis was also resurrected from death. Mm. Like the fruits of the earth that die in winter only to be reborn in spring. Speaking of death, these oaks are all dying and I doubt they will rise again. I'm afraid the disease will have the final say. What disease? No one can find me. I am unknown to myself. 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 For the time being, the birds were enough to make Helen forget the grief and the rage over losing Max. Losing him, not to another woman, but to the failure of marriage itself. And the failure of love to survive the hidden restrictions and the stillborn contentment of happily ever after. The birds she thought knew better flying free with the wind, lighting and leaving at a moment's notice, giving birth to song. Helen was starting to realize the errors of her ways with the promise of redemption in the conference of birds.
You don't have enough sulfur to last two minutes. Sulfur. Sulfur. What could that mean? to do with science. Let's try alchemy. So sulfur is sexual energy. You think I don't have enough sexual energy to last two minutes with you? No, you didn't say that. You said I didn't have enough sulfur to last two minutes there. The mighty oaks are strong, but this disease is spreading fast with new symptoms of decay and degeneration. Phytophthora remorum. You are fungus-like. An algae-related, soil-dwelling root pathogen. You live in the roots, but you feed off the leaves. You live in the roots and feed off the leaves. You live in the roots and feed off the leaves. What lives in the roots and feed off, feeds off the leaves? You do. I live in the roots and feed off the leaves. Yes, you do. Ravenous predator of the dark wood. What am I hunting? Stories. You are stalking the dark wood for stories. Talk. 
I told you to call me, not come over. Why are you here? Shouldn't you be working? I, I took the day off. Hope, I know what you're doing. What are you talking about? What am I doing? You've done this before. What? Done what? You're annoying me again. I see the pattern. We get close, we fight, you kick me out, and then you go and you write another story. I don't want to be your next story. What do you mean by you don't want to be my next story? Feels like I'm in some weird social experiment. So a relationship is a social experiment? Is this like some artist thing, the way you create these crises so you can write? So you think I can't write without creating a crisis? By the way, I do not write about you. I'm not trying to offend you. I just don't want to break up. But if we're breaking up, Let's do it for real, like adults. We go our own separate ways. Really, Ben? Like adults? You show up unannounced, interrupt my work, tell me we're breaking up. Wow, just wow. Weren't you listening? I said I don't want to break up. I just don't like feeling jerked around. I do not need this drama. I think you'd better go. Leave, please. All right, I'm going. It's over. I'm leaving you, Hope. I'm doing this for us.
I can hear your heart breaking. What's the sound of a heart breaking? It sounds like a morning dove. dove is often mistaken for the call of an owl at first, but if you listen closely, you can hear a grating, throat-rattling sound preceding the first coo. Sounds like an owl. Tell that to the morning dove. How long have you been a dendrologist? You didn't answer my question. I didn't care for your question. Though I'm known by my title as a dendrologist, that is not how I actually know myself. How do you know yourself? I don't. You don't know yourself? I am unknown to myself. I study the mystery of trees, and I am consumed by that mystery. You're consumed by the mystery. That's uh, my way of saying I'd rather not talk about it. Shall I stop talking? Yes. Please. Hello? Keith? This is Hope. Oh, oh we, yes. We met at the cafe. I recognize your voice. How's it going, Hope? Oh, I've been busy writing a short story for this literary arts magazine. Oh, really? That's intriguing. Um, anyway, I, I live near this forest. I'd love to go for a walk there with you. Would you be available tomorrow around, um, let's say, noon? Yes, I am. Hmm. That sounds lovely. Uh, where do I go? I'll text you the directions. See you tomorrow. Great. In the forest.
trees. Trees are always communicating with each other, constantly absorbing and sending signals through their vast underground rooting systems. The invisible forest. What we can't see connects us all.
this sulfur lime compound temporarily alleviates the tree suffering. But sadly, there are no guaranteed cures for sudden oak death. Sulfur? Why sulfur? Sulfur is the fire element. These oaks are hungry for fire. The pathogen that causes sudden oak death has always been present, but latent in the earth. It became active due to the absence of, of, of natural forest fires. The earth's way of renewing its forests. Callista. Hi, Callista. Hi. Listen, I was really looking forward to hearing more about the story that you're writing um, before we were so rudely interrupted. I, I got a little carried away with that stranger. <laughs> well, I'd like to continue our conversation over tea. My treat. Sure, that would be great. When? Uh, it turns out I'm actually a few blocks away from the tea house where we brought you. Could you meet me there? Unless it's too short notice. No, I mean, yes, I, I, it'd be great to take a break from writing, actually. Um, I could be there in 15. That's great. See you soon. Great, see you soon. Thanks. Who am I to think I can make a difference? Do I continue treating them with the sulfur compound, even though I know it won't ultimately heal them? Or do I just walk away and let them die? No, I won't let them die. These oaks are hungry for fire. I'm still curious to hear more about your psychological romance. You know, I'm still figuring it out. It's as though the story's writing itself, almost. But it's kind of about how our dreams and experiences of the subconscious mind shape our conscious perception and Where's Calliope? Is she here somewhere? She's working in the lab today, distilling plant essences. Sounds scientific. Is she a scientist? I'd say she's more shaman than scientist. Shaman? You mean like in those Castaneda books?
No, nothing like that. Those books are a sham, by the way. Calliope underwent a radical change after the death of her husband. Her perception opened up. She began seeing things, spirits, energy forms, entities. Entities? She's got chill bumps. Tell me about it. Remember that guy I saw here the other day? Calliope saw what happened. What happened? What'd she see? She saw your spirit leave your body from the first moment you saw him. She thinks my spirit left my body. I don't know what she thinks. I just know what she told me. I'd love to talk with her about what she saw. I don't know. Um, she doesn't usually like to talk about these things. I can ask her, but no guarantees. She can be unpredictable. Hmm. I'll call you. Oh, well, you're going? I need to get back and help Calliope with the plants. Thanks for the tea. Mm -hmm. what, what's that? Um, I had some pieces in a group show at a local gallery. Um, I was just there picking up what didn't sell. Mm. Can I see it? Sure. Let's I love this. What's it called? The Moon Tree. It's part of a series I've been working on based on alchemical woodblock prints. And it's for sale? I mean, can I purchase it? I don't know. I was actually relieved that it was the one that didn't sell. Um, I'll give it some thought and let you know. I'll be in touch.
this is Callista. I would have rather spoken to you directly. I'm calling on behalf of Calliope, since she does not use phones. She says that she can meet with you tonight at 8 p.m. at your place, but she prefers to meet outside. Um, maybe you have a backyard or a garden area. She will also need three candles, a bowl for water, and some cut flowers. Uh, text me your address, and I will drop her off there right at 8. Keith, it's me, Hope. I know. <laughs> to what do I owe this pleasure? I'd like to meet with you again, today, if possible. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll be in dress rehearsal all afternoon. What about later? Say, around six? I can do that. There's a bench at the entrance to the forest where we met. I can be there at six. Great, right. See you at the forest bench at six. Great, thanks. See you soon, bye. Yeah, see you soon, bye. I thought you broke up with me. I fucked up. I don't know how to break up with you. Flowers? Okay, that's weird. weird. Am I being weird? No, not you. I just didn't expect this. I really can't talk with you right now. I'm in the middle of a critical scene in the story. Thanks for the flowers. Very sweet of you. A hug. Can I have a hug?
I'll call you later, okay? Okay. Helen's true calling found its home in her love for Phineas and the great work they were to discover together. What started as trifling flirtations now blossoms into her new identity as Soror Mystica, esoteric partner in the great alchemical opus for healing the tree of life.
Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. I dig your shirt. Oh, thank you. You like it? Yeah, Thanks. very much. You have a little bit of makeup right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know. You're so busy with your production. Yeah. I must have uh, not gotten all of it after dress rehearsal today. It suits you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, tell me about this story you're writing. It's about the alchemy of love. Hmm. It's for Artlet, this literary magazine. Yeah, you're familiar. I know Artlet. Congratulations. Thanks. The alchemy of love. Say more. It's about how love needs to be transformed hmm. so it doesn't stagnate and rot into domesticity and turn into this quotidian, prosaic replica of love. That's pretty heady stuff. How does this play out in the story? <laughs> it's not just playing out in the story complicated. Oh. It's playing out in your actual life. It's playing out right where you're sitting right now. I'm in the story. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we first met, I said you look like someone I know. That someone is a character in my story. Go on. I wrote myself into the story as another character who falls in love with him. You're inhabiting a fantasy you've created. Why are you doing this? My boyfriend broke up with me. <sighs> You're creating your own rebound. Very imaginative. Charming, actually. I find you very attractive. I feel drawn to you, Keith. Hope. There's something you need to know about me. I'm asexual. I have absolutely no interest in having sex with anybody. Asexual? Mm -hmm. Really? Oh. What, what's that like? Have you always been asexual? No. <laughs> I was very sexually active as a teenager. Then one day, sex just started looking like a big ego trip and I lost interest in it, just like that. An ego trip. Hmm. I never thought about it like that. Sex is all about the fantasy, the fantasy of sex. And I just wasn't interested. Hope. I like you. And I don't want you to get the wrong idea about me. Thanks. I can't stop feeling these feelings for you.
I'm flattered, but I'm not convinced those feelings are actually for me. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Listen, um, you should come see my show tonight. Eight o'clock? I can get you in, plus one. I wish, I, I have a prior commitment tonight. Mm. I understand, it's not for everyone. It's about time and the cycles of time. Hmm. You sure you can't make it? Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Maybe next time. Yeah. Um, listen, I must get back to the theater. You have my number. Yeah. <clears throat> Stay in touch. I'd like that. I'd like that too. Please be good to yourself. Okay. okay? What Helen found with Phineas was not what she was looking for. She was looking for a new lover, another husband, a future together as man and wife. What she found was more truth about herself. What she needed was the self-compassion to live with even more truth about herself. Clippy, how'd you get in? Calista wanted you to have this. How much does she want for it? It's a gift. Hmm. Calista said you wanted to see me. Yes, I did. I do. Can I get you anything? You have the bowl of water and the three candles. What about the flowers? We must be on the earth. Outside, right. Follow me. I asked Callista to tell me about what you saw at the cafe. You told her you saw my spirit leave my body? 
Yes, I know, she told me, but we're not going to talk about that. What are we going to talk about? Be still, child. Be very still. You are a sorceress. Listen to me now. Yours is a sorcery of words, spell casting. But your sorcery has been reversed. You are under your own spell. You are repeating the same story. It's with Ben. My boyfriend. I love him, but... He's not my type. Forget about type. You are both under the same spell. When the spell is broken, then you can be together. Place the bowl in the center of the clearing there and put the candles around the bowl in a large triangle. What are we going to do? Nothing. Everything is already happening. Just stay seated in the center of the temple, there, facing that bowl. Just like this bowl of water, you have become full. Maybe too full. You must empty now. Close your eyes. Empty. Empty.
the sun is rising The warm golden sun of you I can't feel anything I can't see the sun There's no sun child this is for protection protection from what from your old self After the royal merging of opposites comes the negretto, the black bile, the carbon blackening of the materia prima. What was once united must now be separated. With the patience of precise measurement, a distilled extract can be liberated and used to treat all ailments of the soul. But this cannot be hurried. It can never be rushed, lest all turns to poison. This alchemy of sulfur, this transformation by fire, brings to life what it does not destroy. Pull over and park. Sorry. That was my girlfriend. I accidentally hung up on her. She's going to be calling back any minute now. We're trying to work it out. What's up? Is everything all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Can you come over, like, soon? Yeah. I have one more after this. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to talk. I like the sound of that. I'll be there soon. Bye. Sorry about that. This rides on me.
That's amazing. What is that? Yeah. Uh, it was a gift. A gift from a new friend. What do you see in it? I see 13 moons on a tree. You look different. I feel different. A oh, lot's happened since yesterday. What, with that guy you said you were seeing? No. I want to talk about us. I think I'm pregnant, Ben. You think you're pregnant? There's nobody else. You're the father. How could you possibly know? I don't know how I know. Well, you, you'll get one of those pregnancy tests, right? I mean, just to be sure? Of course. I'm not doubting your feelings. I just need a little more science on this. I get it. You have your process. I have mine. That's a nice change. What? I'm used to you making a bigger deal out of our differences. I've been trying to escape the thing that's most real to me. What's that? You knew it all along. You called me on it. I've been selfishly creating crisis after crisis in our relationship to stoke my creative fire, my writing. You're afraid your art will suffer if you're happy? I think happiness will turn everything mediocre. Why do I need extreme experiences to feel creative? This moment of mediocrity is brought to you by the loving father of our future child.
The spell. 